Hello everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Kraid Astro Mod Pack. In between episodes, I just went ahead and moved everything over to the new base. Um, as you can see here, I expanded the garden a little bit and set up a little scarecrow version of me. I also got the uh, whole smelting set up uh, over here. And we have all of our different furnaces here, stone cutter, anvil, etc. And as for the create machines, I just went ahead and set up five water wheels here and um, basically just all hooked all of the machines up to the same power. And that should give us a little bit of room for expansion in the future if we need it. But in today's episode, what I want to do is actually get a few bits of automation set up. The first thing I want to do is to actually get a smelting system set up. And basically we're going to be using lava and fans to smelt all of our items. It might also be nice to uh, be able to crush everything up first, but I don't know if it's actually necessary in this mod pack. It might be good to turn things like azurine into raw tin, or viridium into copper, uh, that sort of thing. So I think it might be worth doing anyway. And because we messed with the cart assembler in the previous episode, I think it's about time to finally get started on the mining drill. But first, I think I want to take a look at what is in this chest, and it looks like we've already got a ton of stacks of, of wood. And oh, oh man. Yeah, baby. That is a lot of stuff. Um, I might eventually filter out the oak saplings and just uh, void them. Maybe the sticks too. Uh, the apples will be useful if we uh, if we get villagers. That way we can uh, cure them. Um, as you can see, I also got started on a little bit of a brick slab border for this thing, but I ran out of bricks pretty fast. So yeah, it's only halfway done. So before we're able to actually automate a lot of these things, one of the things we're gonna need is kelp. Now, I don't know, maybe this is, yeah, we might be able to find some this way. I'm going to see if this is counted as a ocean or if it's just a lake. Hopefully we don't have to go too far to find kelp. Yeah, unfortunately, it looks like there isn't any kelp here, so uh, we're going to have to go and find a different body of water. All right, so we've reached the other uh, ocean here. And it is actually a lukewarm ocean. That's pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, we did find some kelp, which is really good. All right, I'm back home now. And I'm just going to go ahead and plant this kelp. I guess down here will work. It's pretty deep, so it should grow up all the way. We'll let a little bit of it grow, and maybe I'll bring some uh, bone meal over. And I would definitely like to automate that as soon as possible as well. Um, but for now, we're just going to leave it like this. So we'll go ahead and grow some of that up. And chop it down. And hopefully we get a good few pieces. We got five. That's not too bad, I guess. Oh, six. There we go. And the reason that we needed kelp, by the way, is that we actually need it to make mechanical belts which is dried kelp and rubber. Um, I actually forgot that they added rubber to this recipe, so I'm going to have to go ahead and get some of that as well. I don't think we have any rubber trees in the area. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get smelting on at least a little bit of this. Can Okay, it can go in the smoker. And by the way, I think previously I said that the rubber on these trees doesn't grow back. Um, I guess either in this pack or maybe in the updated version of Tech Reborn, it actually does um, regrow. But the last time I used this, which was about a year ago, they, uh, they didn't actually regrow. So you had to always replant your trees. And per usual, we just need to throw that in the mixer. And that should take care of it. And now we can combine that to make... I don't know why my axe went in there. To make a couple of mechanical belts. Sweet. Oh, and we actually get uh, three as a reward. Cool. Looks like we also have an one here. Oh, right. For um, gathering 100 logs, you actually get uh, five of every sapling. That's uh, uh, 
Okay, <laughs> here we go. Cool. So, like I said, uh, we're going to be using an encased fan to actually smelt our items. And the uh, the fans are pretty easy as well. Uh, we just need a propeller, which is four iron sheets and an andesite alloy. There's the propeller. And there's the encased fan. Cool. And by the way, if you didn't know about this whole process, there is actually a quest here that'll actually tell you how to um, get everything. So the last thing that we're going to need that we haven't actually crafted before is the andesite funnels, which the recipe has changed for. It's now a rubber and andesite alloy. I actually think I like this recipe a little bit better. Cool, so now we have two of those, which is exactly what we need. And now we can try to find a location to actually build this system on. Um, as you can see, by the way, that's one of those pre-generated mines. Um, okay, getting shot at by a skeleton. I think what I'll do is just clear an area over here and sort of attach it to the power system we already have here. Um, this might overload it, though. So I might have to make another water wheel just in case. Um, eventually we will get into steam engines. I don't know if I want to do that next episode or in a couple of episodes, but uh, definitely sooner than later. I didn't really touch it in the last time I did create, so I think it would be fun to actually uh, work with that. So I'm going to go for my usual design for this. And we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, just like that. Hook that up with a belt. Oh, nice, and that's an advancement. And by the way, I think this can be three wide, um, but you might have to make your fans a little bit faster. I'm gonna place a log there and a barrel on top on either end. And from here, you can actually decide which, uh, which side you wanna be, the input or output. I think I want input here and output there. And I just have some extra decoration blocks here. And I'll put the encased fan there with the lava in front. But I am going to use a slab right there. And hopefully that'll still allow the, uh, the lava to be spouted out or whatever it does. And I'll just put some glass in front just for a little bit of extra decoration. So in terms of power, I think I just want to put a vertical gearbox there and carry some shafts over uh actually i think i want it this way and maybe have a horizontal one there and just carry all these shafts over this way with another gearbox there aha uh -huh. here we go so that should be blowing out now hmm let me see about that oh that's just gonna well, it is blowing now, so yeah, we can't actually use slabs there, unfortunately. So I'm just going to place some signs in there. Three should do. Just like that. And, okay, it looks like we're going in the wrong direction. As you can see, the, uh, maybe you can't really see that, but there's particles blowing in. It should be blowing out red particles, so um, I actually need to reverse this. And I might be lazy and just put another gearbox there. That should reverse it. Yeah, there we go. Cool, so now we just need to hook up the uh, belt. And I think that's going to be a little bit too fast, so I might have to gear this down a bit. So we basically do this in reverse as if we want to uh, uh, gear it up. We go small to big, and that'll actually slow it down just a little bit. And then we can go small to... Big again, I guess, right there. It's one block off, but we could bring it this way. And it's actually going in the wrong direction, so I'll just put another gearbox there. By the way, we're kind of using a lot of gearboxes here, but... Yeah, that's kind of the price you pay if you want to uh, have all of your systems hooked up to one uh, power source. So, in order to actually test this, I'm just going to throw a half a stack of cobblestone in there. And yeah, the uh, belt's a little bit too fast still. All right, I think I fixed the system here. Um, I did actually have to end up 
I'm adding two water wheels here and just overclocking uh, these two fans. I added a second fan here and slowed down the water wheel. I don't know why it's uh, it seems different from the last pack that I was playing on. Uh, maybe I'm just not remembering exactly how I did that system, but yeah, this is a uh, it's definitely working now. It's a little slow, but I think that's all right. Eventually, I will have all of these systems hooked up to a uh, steam engine, though, so it's really not that big of a deal to add a few extra water wheels here for now. So I think with that done, I think it's time to get started on the automatic mining machine. So for this machine, we're actually going to need nine mechanical drills, which means I'm going to need a lot more andesite alloy, which is why I'm uh, smelting up some more here. And we're also going to need, I believe, two deployers. So I'll go ahead and get working on those and get all those components ready, and then we'll come back. All right, so I think I have all the parts assembled now. So I think we can go ahead and start assembling this thing. So first, I want to actually get my rail down as well as my cart assembler, just like that. And I'll put the mine cart in now as well. Um, and I'm going to use the diorite um, pillars and cut diorite just as a little bit of a decoration block. So I want to go let's see here a couple of blocks and we'll actually place down the drills first. And we'll put them here. That might be too far ahead. I can't quite remember. So we'll get all of these down. And immediately after that, we need both of our deployers. And so the first one we'll place um, blocks. We'll get a cobblestone or deep slate in here. And then the second one places rails. Then we can go ahead and we'll put that there. I guess that'll look good. It's kind of hard to make these machines look good. Um, we'll go with pillar there. That kind of gives it a little bit more decoration. And I do want to put the seat there like that. And that is pretty much the system done. And I just realized I forgot the plow. So let me go and make that really quick. And there we go, something like that. The plow will basically break the rails that the second uh, deployer here places down and that way we have a constant loop of uh, rails and this thing can move pretty much forever. Uh, one more thing we're gonna want is a couple of barrels on this. It doesn't really matter where you put these. And hmm, I think I wanna place some maybe here and here. That way we have access on either side. And one thing I forgot is that we actually need a furnace minecart here. That'll actually allow us to feed the uh, mining bore here a piece of coal, and that'll actually move it. So I think when we place that, and I don't have my glue, and so now all we need to do is glue everything together. So we'll get all the drills together, and we'll connect that to the deployers, connect that like that. We want to make sure that everything is connected together, but... We don't want any extra spaces, just in case uh, something gets attached. And I believe that should be everything. So now when we give this uh, card assembler power, we should have a mining machine. So, and we get a little bit of lag, but I believe everything actually got attached. So if we hit it with the wrench, yep, looks like we picked everything up. And now it's time for a test run. All right, so I've just gone ahead and cleared a little bit of space down here in the mine. And and don't forget before you place this thing down to actually make sure that you uh, put your filters in here. I definitely didn't almost forget and head down into the mine already. Uh, so yeah, you just want to put a cobblestone or if you're down in deep slate levels, you just want to put a piece of cobbled deep slate here and then rails in the second one, and then just in one of your chests, you just want to put um, some cobblestone and a rail. Cool. Now we can uh, head down. And as I pick that up, I noticed a problem. Um, this uh, deployer actually needs to be one further down. Um, yeah, because it placed the cobblestone here, it actually needs to place it 
there. So let me go ahead and reapply the filter. Okay, that should be everything now. As soon as I re-glue it. Here we go. All right, so now we're down here in the mines. And I like to place at least three rails. And that way it actually gets a little bit of room to do its thing. And it should be fine if it's placed in a wall. As long as the minecart itself is all right. So I think I just want to give this thing some coal. And yep, it immediately starts working. And it's already moving. Yeah, uh, the audio sounds a little bit weird. That might be my headphones, though. Yeah, so you can see it's uh, placing down rails. And it looks like we ran into some coal here. And if there's ever a gap in front of it, this deployer will uh, fill it with, um, with cobblestone. So I'm going to go ahead and let this thing run for a while, and we'll check out the results. And before we get too far into the time lapse, we did hit water here. And fortunately, the system uh, handles water really well. So I'm just going to go ahead and yep, just fill it in like that. It'll even go through lava, which can be kind of dangerous, especially if you're uh, sitting on top of it. Um, yeah, anyway, let's get back to it. All right, so that was about a minute of mining, and you can see that the uh, tunnel it made is really, really long already. This is going to be way faster and way more efficient than actually using the hammer, uh, because uh, the hammer will actually consume materials, whereas the uh, the mining bore will not. So let's uh, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, how many materials we got. That was about a minute of mining. And by the way, if you want to disassemble the machine, all you need to do is um, put it in the cart assembler and turn off the power. All right, so here is our first barrel, and I think that's everything that was already in there. So yeah, everything else is in here, and wow. Uh, we got a piece of iron, 43 copper, which is pretty huge. Good amount of flints and zinc and tin. Yeah, like I said, this machine is going to be really huge in uh, actually gathering materials in the future. Um, it's more efficient than the hammer because it doesn't consume any materials. It is a little bit faster as well. I think unless you compare it to like a manilium hammer, which I don't know if is actually in this mod pack or not. Plus, it is fully AFKable, although you do need to watch out for lava. But if you're not anywhere near lava, it's not really a huge concern. So next, I kind of want to deal with a issue here really quick, and that is that this farm is working too well. So I think for now, I'm just going to go ahead and out, out, turn it off, if it'll let me. There we go. Um, yeah, we might need to figure out a storage solution for this. So if we go back to, I believe this is, yeah, chapter one or zero, I guess. Um, we actually have a mod called Tech Reborn Storage, and we can actually go ahead and make these, I believe it's going to be the storage buffers, but basically they act sort of like uh, drawers in the past in which they can store a single item, but it can actually hold, it looks like 32 stacks, which is going to be really, really handy. So the crafting recipe for these are pretty, pretty simple. Uh, we just need some planks, a barrel, and a piece of paper. And for the tree farm, we're actually going to need probably four, but I want to make five because the fifth one will actually act as a bit of a item pipe, I guess. It'll actually transfer the different items to the different barrels. All right, here's our crude storage units. So I'm just going to temporarily move all of this storage over here and we'll end up placing it back into the uh, new storage units. 
So I'm not really sure how these storage units work. Um, I've never actually used them before. Um, but supposedly they can directly pull items from an interface. Uh, from an inventory, I mean. But I don't know if they can pull from an interface like this. So what I might need to do is to actually make a bit of a buffer here with an andesite funnel. And maybe move it down one. Uh, this is going to be a little bit messy, by the way. Um, until we get further into the pack, we uh, we don't have a lot of solutions for uh, moving a lot of items. Here. So the one here in the center will act as a bit of a filter. And we'll just go ahead and place a storage unit on either side. Something like that. And now if we actually open up the inventory here, we can go ahead and configure the slots. And I believe we want to set these to orange, something like that. Let's see here, oh man, that side. Auto output. And so that'll actually send out the items, but then we want each of these to um, input, auto input, and then if we put an item, let's say we want apples here, we can go ahead and lock it. All right, so I reconfigured the system here just a little bit, and I'm actually using the one down here as a secondary pipe. That way we just have a little bit more symmetry in the system. And I am hoping that this works just like this. This is gonna be my first time testing it. So currently we have one apple in the system. And those items didn't go in. Well, for now we'll try a shoot. Um, I know that this system will actually work, but I think the um, items there need to be outputted. So they went in and, oh, I need to configure this one, I believe, to be input on the top, auto input. And yep, there we go, the apples went in there. Now the real test is going to be to put some sticks and saplings in here. So currently we have one stack of saplings in here. We try a second one. It's stuck there. Interesting. Let's try to change the output. Hmm. Oh right, I didn't uh, configure the input of this one. So I believe, yep, that went into the saplings. Cool. And let's just try it with sticks just to make sure. It goes in and it sort of blinks like that. I might put some trapdoors on the cover here, but uh, yeah, so that is that system. Cool. And now we can try to turn this thing back on. Um, everything kind of grew over it. Let's see here, go something like that and get out of there. Oh, and... I don't know if it actually matters if there's a shoot there or not, but there we go. And I don't know why some of them are going in there. That's kind of weird. All right, so this is probably the best that I uh, could come up with. It doesn't work 100% of the time. Um, for example, if I throw some sticks in here, currently uh, currently we have 481 in there. If I throw in 34. Some of them end up in the right place. And some don't. I I really don't understand this mod. Anyway, guys, I think that's all the time we're going to have for today. In between episodes, I'm definitely going to run the mining machine here for a while and just try to get a bunch of resources. In the next episode, I think we're going to take a look at the fluid stuff and actually get working on a few more of these uh, chapters here. I definitely want to make my way to the moon as soon as we can. Um, but yeah, I think I want to work on getting a steam engine up and running. Just so that we don't have to look at these sort of ugly water wheels here. And that way we have sort of a central power system for the entire base. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you next time. Peace.